Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add a pineapple knot paracord wrap onto a flashlight. This flashlight is the LED Lenser L6, which is quite a compact design. It is about an inch in diameter and the wrapping surface for the grip is about three and a half inches. I really like adding paracord wraps onto flashlights because it not only improves the grip, it makes them look great plus it makes them easier to find in the dark. Now as far as the knot goes, it is a two pass pineapple knot. It is not the easiest knot to tie, but following the instructions should make things quite a bit easier. Now I'm using gutted paracord in this project which means that you remove the inner strands out of your paracord. But let's take a look at the supplies a bit further. As far as supplies go, the first thing that you're going to need is two pieces of paracord. I have removed the inner strands out of both of these pieces and for this flashlight, which again is about an inch in diameter and the wrapping surface is about three and a half inches, you're going to need about 9 feet of each of the cords. You're obviously going to need a flashlight. Again, this is the LED Lenser L6, but you can use another with similar dimensions. You're going to need a PVC pipe that will act as our mandrel, and the PVC pipe needs to be slightly larger than the flashlight, so that when we tie the knot, we can easily transfer it onto the flashlight. Finally, I recommend using a rubber band to hold the standing ends of your cords. I also recommend using a lacing needle, which will make your job a lot easier. Finally, use a knife or scissors to cut your cords. So with that said, let's get started. I have attached a rubber band onto my PVC pipe and I attached a lacing needle onto one end of my paracord. I'm going to take the other end of my paracord and tuck it under this rubber band. I'm then going to wrap around my mandrel or the PVC pipe three times. So once, twice, three times. Come around here on the right side, then start wrapping towards the left side. So over once, twice and three times like this basically creating these x shapes we're going to continue by wrapping towards the right side in between the x's so we wrap around and around and we come out on the right side here with an over one then take the lacing needle and go under here. So we exit with an over one, then we re-enter with an under one. Like this. And we're basically going to follow this chord here and do the opposite of what it is doing. So it went over here, so we went under. Then it goes under, so we go over. Then under. And over. And under. And over. And under. And under. And over and under and finally over on the left side then place your working end next to the standing end and you have tied half of your first knot then pull through the rest of the cord
after you have pulled through your cord, we're going to continue by doubling up our standing end. So basically we're going to do exactly what it does. So it went under here, so we go under as well. Then over, then under. Then over and under. Then over and under. And over and under. And finally over on the right side. Then what we're going to do is travel towards the left side. And we're going to go the opposite of this cord. Or basically we're going to double up this cord here. So we're going to start with an over since this cord is going under. So we start with an over, then under. And you can see that we are basically doubling up this cord, doing exactly what it is doing. So here we're going to go over two, then under one, then over two, and under one, and over two, and under one, and over two, under one, and finally, we exit the knot on the left side with an over one. Then what we're going to do is we're going to split these two doubled cords, which we just doubled now. And we're going to do that by going the opposite of what these two cords are doing. So we're going to continue by starting with an over, since both of these cords are going under. So over, then under. Then both of these cords are going under these two cords, so we're going to go over when we travel between them. Then under. And over two again. And under one. Then over two and under one. Over two, under one. And finally we exit on the right side with an over one. Then we're going to split the next two doubled cords. So these are the two doubled cords. And we're going to travel between them, doing the opposite of what they are doing. So we're going to start with an under. And then you can see that the two cords are going under. So we're going to go over, then under, since they are going over. And we're basically going to do an over one, under one sequence until we reach the left side. So over one, under one. Over one, under one. All we're doing. You may be running out of your cord at this point, so if you need any extra, just pull in some slack out of the knot and get it to this working end. This can happen because I calculate my cord lengths quite accurately. At least for Turks head knots. So like this. And then all we need to do is place our working end next to our standing end. Like this, and at this point we have tied the base knot for our wrap. 
As you can see, I have adjusted the knot a bit to make it look a bit nicer. I attached a lacing needle onto my second cord. I'm then going to take the other end of my cord and place it under the rubber band, like this, onto the left side of the standing end of the first cord. Then I'm going to take my lacing needle and travel alongside my standing end of the first cord on its left, going under two. We're now going to travel towards the right side in an over one under one sequence. So over one under one. Over one under one. Over one under one. And we're basically doubling up this cord here on the left. We do not exit on the right side with an over one, but we stop just before at our under one. So we did not go out of the knot, but we're going to re-enter before we exit the knot. Let's pull in our cord. The next sequence that we're going to do starts with an under one. So we did end our previous sequence with an under one, and we start our next one with an under one as well. As you can see, we did not exit the knot, but turned around just before. We're now going to continue over one, under one. Then over two in order to split this pair, then under one. Then over one, under one. Then over two to split this pair, and under one. Then over one, under one. Then over two to split this pair. Then under one. Over one, under one. Over two to split a pair, then under one. Then over one, under one. We again do not exit on the left side, but stop just before with an under one. Now pull through the rest of your cord. Just like in the previous sequence, we're going to start with an under one. Like this. We did not exit the knot on the left, but instead stopped just before and started with an under one. Then continue over one, under one. Then over two to split a pair, and under one. Then over one, under one. Over two to split a pair, and under one. 
over one under one. Then over two to split a pair and under one. Over one under one. Over two to split a pair. Then under one. Over one and under one. Again, we do not exit the knot on the right side. Now pull through the rest of your cord. So we stopped with an under one just before exiting the knot on the right side. We're now going to re-enter immediately with an under two in order to split a pair. So under two. Like this. Then over one, under one. Over two to split a pair. Under two to split a pair. Then over one, under one. Over two to split a pair. Under two to split a pair. Then over one, under one. Over two to split a pair. Under two to split a pair. Then over one, under one. Over two to split a pair. Under two to split a pair. Then finally over under. Again, we do not exit the knot on the left side. Pull through the rest of the cord. So we stopped our previous sequence with an under one. We're now going to continue by starting our next one with an under two in order to split the first pair. We're now going to continue over one, under one. Then over two to split a pair, under two to split a pair. Then over one, under one. Over two to split a pair, under two to split a pair. Over one, under one. Over two to split a pair. Under two to split a pair. Then over one, under one. Over two to split a pair. Under two to split a pair. Then over, under. Stopping just before we exit the knot with an under one. Then pull through the rest of your cord. So we stopped our previous sequence at an under one. And we're going to start the next one with an under two in order to split the first pair. Like this. Then continue over two in order to split the next pair. 
then under one over two to split the next pair then under two to split another pair then over two to split a pair then under one over two under two and over two then under one over two under two over two and under one then over two under two over two and under one we do not exit the knot on the left but we re-enter with an under two then over two and under one then over two under two over two under one over two under two over two under one over two under two over two under one over two under two over two and finally under one on the right side we have now come to the last pass which is a simple under two over two sequence so under one over two under two 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 then over two 
and under 1. Like this. At this point, we place our working end under 2 on top of the standing end. And we have completed our interweave. So this is a 2-pass type 1 pineapple knot. Before we transfer our wrap onto the flashlight, take the working end of one of the cords and follow the standing end of the same color a bit further into the knot. This is going to help secure your ends a bit further and there is no rule as to how deep you should go. Usually a few tucks are recommended. So like this with one color, then take the working end of the other color and again follow the standing end of the same color a bit further into the knot. The next step is going to be to transfer our wrap onto the flashlight. Like this. And we are not quite done with the ends at this point. What we need to do now is actually work the working ends under the wrap towards the right side up to here. So take one of the working ends, go under the wrap and towards the right side. Like this. Then do the same with the other end. Like this. And now we need to take care of the standing ends as well. And you can see that we have doubled up some of the standing ends, which is not good. So we're going to pull our standing end out up to the point where it is doubled. Attach a lacing needle. Then run our standing end to the left, going under the knot. Take the standing end of the other cord. So this one here. And do the same. So simply run it to the left side. Now at this point you should have two ends on the left side and two on the right side. So it is easy to cut them off once you have done tightening your wrap. As far as the tightening goes, you start at your standing ends, which are at the bottom of the flashlight. 
you pull on the standing end just to find where it starts. Then you start pulling on the cord until you come out out of the working end. Usually I need to tighten such a wrap maybe two times in order to get a nice look to it. This takes quite a bit of time, but you want to do it with attention to detail, so you're going to get a nice looking wrap. So guys, after cutting and melting the ends, our project is complete. Thank you for joining me and see you next time.